song ends right as the draft begins guys grand finals manila masters sea qualifier mrp kafka here we've got maneski taking on faceless and it was about an hour and 15 minute break unfortunately for maneski faceless just couldn't uh, get together uh, to get this started early maneski would have been coming in with a lot of momentum after that first series today uh, versus evos where they took two pretty decisive victories uh, mushi as well as 343 or adam uh, playing really well in that first series yeah some solid games from maneski really impressive actually i think they played incredibly well however i think the draws were mm -hmm. mediocre maybe uh call them i think i think they they kind of have to step it up here they're a bit predictable in the direction they go, especially with kind of the comfort picks per uh, hero uh, player combination. Uh, definitely seems like they've done their homework, though. Faceless doing a lot of Treant recently. Uh, they've been running a lot of Legion Commander as well, some Nature's Prophet. So uh, Faceless definitely feeling kind of confident enough to experiment, at least early on in this uh, tournament. We'll see now that the you know the stakes are on the line, winner of this series, best of three series goes to the land final uh, whether they kind of lean back on what are considered widely the more str uh, str the stronger heroes uh, in the meta or if they continue with kind of uh, the new flair that they've been exhibiting recently yeah i really hope we get to see either triant or nature prophet this this mm -hmm. series triant first man so that's a bit sad but especially nature prophet i think is has incredible incredible potential now mm -hmm. has He's a bit of a weird hero, as in uh, nowadays there's a lot of people who can straight up kill him whenever he shows in lane. So it can be a bit hard to play him, but uh, Faces have done it now uh, a few games, and I really hope they pick it up as well. I really want to see an issue profit. Yeah, and a bit of variability in the way he can lane. We saw kind of the merits of you know picking a self-sufficient safe laner uh, for Mineski in game one with that life stealer. Nature's Prophet can do can play a similar role, of course. Uh, most often we're going to see him in the off lane and uh, just kind of retreat to the jungle whenever that's not going too well uh, contribute into to fights across the map uh, with his teleport but definitely some variance in the way that you can lane and we are going to see the earth spirit and faceless going to go for probably i want to say their most picked hero thus far in the tournament which is the warlock uh, but they do end up picking up uh, the nyx assassin as well so they take that not only take that away uh, from KYXY, but uh, one of Ice Ice Ice's better heroes as well uh, in their arsenal. Yeah, I I, I love Faceless uh, opening actually, because how I see this, I'm not sure if this is how they're thinking. They might have, if they do, I think it's genius. But okay, this was exactly the pick I thought Mineski were going for. So they open Earth Spirit. Earth Spirit and Life Steal are super good together. And Faceless, they pick Nyx, uh, which is bad against Life Stealer, but you also pick a Warlock. So when Earthspeed Lifesteal initiates, you have the Golem to go to stun through a uh, magic human target. And it's mm -hmm. such a great opening against this, because Lifesteal is going to have some problems with the Warlock. Mm -hmm. And you also have, very, it's it's just, you, you you counter the hero before it's even picked. And it's it's a very nice way of drafting. Yeah, they do get that Vessel for Mineski and uh, definitely the Lifesteal that they're comfortable with. But as you mentioned, Lifesteal, he's going to rely on killing a hero with the Infest Bomb during the duration of his Rage. And if you're able to kind of disjoint that chain of initiation, definitely bodes well for you going forward in the fight. TA Ben, uh, she was banned all three games thus far today in the lower yeah, bracket and bad. grand yeah, finals. So SEA definitely um, hold her in high esteem not only that but especially in combination with the lifestyle a lot of a big single target physical damage burst available to that combination and often ta is going to be building a blink uh, which you know is even better when you have the refraction available so another vehicle for the lifestealer to get into the fray terribly bends a bit early coming out from maneski an interesting one for them to go here uh, obvious for obvious reasons is very good you know in a vacuum one-on-one -on -one against the lifestealer yeah it's it's really hard to play life today against Terrorblade. If if you spend one second of the rage not hitting Terrorblade, and he has illusions, you need to run after that. You, mm -hmm. It's very hard. And you, and Sunder is also great against Life Stealer because Life Stealer, like he doesn't have a way to deal with it usually. Like he doesn't mm -hmm. have a Lincoln's. He has like no kind of like dodge stuff. Doesn't go in this. Doesn't like have much maneuverability. He just stands there, attacks. It's mm -hmm. very easy to Sunder here like that. Yeah. So I think it's a pretty good ban and Invoker getting rid of as well and the Omni Knight which we saw earlier today 
which was it was the same combat where lifesteal or omni knight and right. you kind of just take everything and opponents couldn't do much about it mm -hmm. yeah you spoke to kind of the the nature of the the invoker nyx assassin combination and um, Maneski not willing to give that up there just kind of amplifies what Nyx can do uh, through the early to mid game almost guarantees he's able to net kills with his first few vendetta rotations so really wise Ben uh, coming out from Maneski there and um, we'll see what direction Faceless go in uh, you know they do have their off laner at this point uh, they, they've been running uh, some SF some Monkey King a lot of Jug as well uh, throughout the light throughout the tournament but they do go coddle here so a bit of a defensive support duo for them so it feels like relatively static laning phase for them but uh, this does give them the potential to go aggressive uh, as well if they opt for that yeah a bit of a surprising pick i think i feel like it was no like clear reason why you pick call mm -hmm. except i think there's one very good reason is that call nowadays when you play call you, you get a lot of harm you go like dual off lane or you like you usually right. get a very good form and you can get a four staff as a position four at like 10 minutes and then when life dealer goes on any hero you force them out life deal is useless mm -hmm. uh, at least for in the early stage of the game if life dealer rage and hits a target that's four staff out that's basically his team fight potential is that's all he can do and after that it's kind of gone so i love calling that and for that only reason but other than that it's it seems it seems kind of forced but the hero is pretty damn good especially with the amount of pressure you can put on the offlane. Yeah. I think the, the key is is the latter point that you touched on for me is that you were able to pry the, apply this pressure to the offlane. And often, you know, when you first pick Earth Spirit, a lot of your game depends on how well he does in the first 10 minutes. And when you have a Coddle con constantly blasting your safe laner, it almost attracts his attention there. He has to kind of tip the scales in your favor in that safe lane, which makes his movement a, a little more predictable. Um, so definitely Coddle Nyx can apply a lot of pressure to the safe laner, you know, drain out the life stealer's mana, make him unable to rage, uh, just constantly spamming that with Shock and Magic. So yeah, I definitely think it's uh, it's a it's a pick that, although looks defensive, uh, may give them some aggressive potential, at least in the early game, may make them uh, have to bring the Earth Spirit over towards that top lane, especially now with this Disruptor pick who, you know, Disruptor, he's not a support all by himself that can secure a safe lane. No, uh, it's one of the more solid heroes. In my eyes, Disruptor and Witch Doctor are the two most solid supports in the game that you can always kind of get. And I think that's what they kind of wanted. And the hero is just overall good. He has some catch, he has good uh, good lane, he has good team fight. He has like everything, but not insane at anything either. Mm -hmm. It's one of the greatest all around supports you can get. And a big reason why you see it getting picked here in like third pick or second pick or fourth pick uh, when you need a, a safe lane support. It's pretty solid. However, I'm, I'm pretty scared for Faceless. I feel like they, they draw, their two lost picks here have to be very solid because I feel like Mineski could kind of just put Lifestealer safe lane and then just take control over the map because Carl is going to be there, Nix is going to be there, Lifestealer can more or less free farm against the dual lane as long as he plays relatively safe and then you can just create chaos everywhere else and you have like a warlock it's like pretty easy to kill mm -hmm. and Coddle can't rotate you have like, no rotation heroes and slark if they pick a strong offlaner slark is weak yeah definitely so he he's a hero that it feels like with the right support duo he's a very strong laner and without one he's very weak so definitely yeah. exploitable at the very least and you know a hero that can succumb to pressure uh, early on. Definitely one that can snowball if he has a good early game. Uh, definitely one that pairs up nicely with the Nyx, that ganking duo, but a lot of it is gonna depend on the lanes for Faceless. So it does feel like you know this early game is gonna be very key uh, yeah. as to, and, and telling as to the rest of the game. Sand King pickup comes out for a Mineski. So aside from the Earth Spirit, another vessel uh, for this life stealer uh, definitely a hero as well you mentioned kind of picking a strong off laner this is one that's going to be right up in the face of, of the slark uh, if he doesn't have at least uh, one of his supports nearby at all times yeah this uh, i think mineski has a very good s setup to kind of dominate this early laning phase uh, warlock is kind of nice he's like a support that all he does is heal the carry and they, that can be like decent that can like make you, you're not dying on the safe lane, but you're giving the opponent free farm. Mm -hmm. But compared to having Sanking Earth Spirit destroy your safe lane, that might be a good option. So you just play very defensive. You keep you keep healing the Slark because he's going to take damage from just random stuff. Yeah. Caustic Finale is very good. 
spell and you can play it that way and then that could work but it could backfire pretty hard if if warlock just stands in his lark but lark dies either way you're, you're gonna be having a very hard game for faceless and especially black i'm assuming playing the slark so yeah so there's the lena coming out for mushi we saw him play it earlier today uh, and he's played it throughout the tournament um not the greatest versus Slark. Slark, fairly elusive hero. Um, the, you know, the Queen of Pain was still in the pool there if they wanted to go that route. But Lena, just very stable. And the other thing is, um, you know, the Life Stealer, he wants to be fighting early and often. And Lena is definitely a hero, especially with that minus 30 second respawn talent. If she opts for it, that can continue to do so. So not entirely cooldown dependent, you know, Magnetize and, and Epicenter. Uh, certainly large cooldowns, but not necessarily needed for... You know the quick pickoffs and then transitioning into towers so I, I like the lena pick it's definitely something uh, i think at times uh, picking mushi a comfortable hero that he'll do well in lane with is more important than necessarily picking one for your lineup but here's the timber pickup at the end so this is yeah uh the mid lane timber saw going to be up against mushi yeah i think so i, I feel like the face that might do something weird here mm. but uh i'm not well, sure how i feel like because I don't really like the laning, having yeah. Timber mid and Nyx offlane with a call. Like, it, it seems it seems very risky. So I'm thinking they might do something weird, like we saw Mineski do earlier. Or Warlock but, uh, in mid lane? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think they could put Nyx mid, maybe. Or mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not sure. I feel like they're kind of they're kind of gonna struggle a bit in lane. Like yeah. that can be fine. But I think I mean, we saw Mineski earlier, like kind of like kind of yoloed, and they got super good lanes, even though they had a weaker draft uh, mm -hmm. it looked like a weaker draft but the, the, the way they laned it made it fine yeah. so i'm thinking faceless i feel like they should do that but uh, they don't don't necessarily have to timber mid is very strong you're not gonna kill that guy more like most likely unless you hit a nice timing with lena when she hits uh, level six and you can mm -hmm. like make a sick gank but uh, before that pretty hard to kill nixus has any hard to kill it's just a safer and that's that's very risky could right. could be very hard yeah it definitely feels like a the vulnerable lane um but but if they can survive uh it's a pretty scary team in towards the mid game once the nix and timber saw get online you buy a little bit of space for the slark he starts to become a more powerful hero as well uh, so definitely can see them you know with the propensity to snowball in towards that mid game but uh, i think ease of execution at least in in the early game certainly in the favor of maneski yeah a lot of tps are they gonna place no no one plays bottom so they both just gonna see each other and top lane both mushi what is happening here what is mushi doing he's clearing trees and stuff and i i am a bit confused over what he's he has no items either oh is this against call mainly so that you like cuddle can't hide in trees and blast mm -hmm. so that you're killing all the I, I i don't know it seems random but it, i mean it could have some sick reason so the ward placement itself is a bit weird, but other than that, yeah. the idea makes some sense. But he's going to now buy out. Also, just had to instantly TPO, didn't have time uh, to buy earlier. But... Oh, bottom lane. Oh, my God. Well, that's the first blood for Adam. 3-4-3, three, three, you're going to pick that up. He played very well earlier on today, so continuing that momentum, yeah. picking up his Earth okay. Spirit, even with the nerfs to that rolling boulder. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this hero is a hero. You can, it doesn't matter how much you nerf it. Mm -hmm. Like as long as the core concept of heroes is the same, it's still gonna be tier one hero. So it, it's a bit funny how it works. But very interesting lanes. Both teams actually doing unique lanes. We're gonna have a life steal in mid, and they are adjusting to what I talked about: faceless putting Nyx mid and Timber off lane. Mm -hmm. So. This is, I think this is mind games from both teams knowing each other a lot. And I think Mineska is going to get the better end of it. We'll see how they fare. And towards the mid lane, there are a couple of DCs. We had really smooth connections earlier today. I hadn't experienced any lag, knock on wood, either uh, on the Singapore servers. So hopefully that continues going forward. But I definitely feel like Mineski, you know, with the draft and oh. with this first blood, feeling pretty good about themselves. Yeah. This is not fun to see though when you see everyone starting to DC or <laughs> reconnect and then uh it's a bit unfortunate. 
Adam uh, got, got the first blood, picked up a TP, went top instantly. Yeah. So they might want to make a surprise kill. Timber is actually uh, very weak level one. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't go for my shield, and there's a big difference getting a stun on pro shield. You're much tankier with a poor shield, like incredibly more tankier. And this guy could definitely go down level one uh, if Earth Spirit gets a nice roll, and uh, he might skill whirling death as well which i assume he won't but react the arm level one is not the greatest right he could potentially have a glimpse available as well so definitely some have a lot potential. of damage level one as long as it, it, it's a bit hard for mushy because he, he has to hit the stun mm -hmm. and that's when the, the earth speed nerf might come into play because now it's quite a quite a bad slow so to say from the roll Fun fact, earlier today, Game 2, Mineski versus Evos. Evos had three Arcanas. Uh, or was that Game 1? Three Arcanas versus one of Mineski's, and Mineski won the game. So, mm -hmm. Arcana advantage today is 0-1. And, and in this game, only one Arcana on the field in Mineski's hands. Interesting. <laughs> the real facts. Relevant stats. <laughs> Raging Potato played pretty... Fucking awesome, the first series of the day today, but yeah. uh, had a lot of work done by specifically uh, 343 or Adam on uh, on his Sand King. So we'll see if they can continue the momentum going forward. I'm sure they would have wanted to you know, instantly jump into this series after the first one, but a little bit of a break mentally for them, perhaps a little bit of studying for, for Faceless of that last series. Big stakes on the line here. Winner goes to Manila for the land finals. Yeah, I mean, they got the first battle, so they got momentum already. Mm -hmm. However, these uh, connectivity issues might not uh, be the best. Oh god, this is this is very frustrating as a player. If you're, like, you're, you're getting into game, you got a great start and, like, everyone drops. And you're trying mm -hmm. to reconnect, but you DC instantly. It's, it's very frustrating. And it's not fun for Faceless either. Looks like everyone's restarting. Raging Potato back in. We should get underway fairly soon. Winner of this series joins Secret, Newbie, IG, NP, OG, and EG. There'll be one team from the Philippines qualifier as well. I'm going to be joining them for the Manila Masters. Uh, pretty, pretty big stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of, yeah, tough competition for sure. Yeah. I think uh, Faceless has some experience in that. Mineski. A decent amount, I guess. They played a bit, but not not at the level of what the faceless players have. A couple days ago, Mushi and KYXY getting revenge on their former tag Fnatic. Uh, they're able to t yeah. two o that new squad um, with QO and DJ and the likes. Uh, so they have looked good lately. It feels like Mushi's kind of. This is the first time in a long time that it feels like he's returning to form, so to speak. Oh, been impressed with him thus far. Uh, KYXY, you know, to some extent, you mentioned three and four roles being interchangeable. Um, feels like in, in a lot of games he takes a bit of a backseat farm wise uh, to 2343, three, but uh, still been very effective today thus far. So we'll see if they can continue that. One zip already for Mineski. They're able to net the first blood bottom lane on nuts. And we'll see yeah. how Black gets underway. Bottom lane, he feels like certainly. You know, laning wise, potentially the most vulnerable hero here for Faceless, but it is a signature hero of his, so we'll see if he can play around the danger. Yeah, we're gonna see how Adam's rotation now is gonna work out. If he gets another kill here, it's gonna be very hard for Faceless in the laning stage, because mm -hmm. they already at a disadvantage from how the lanes are set up, I think. And then having two kills oh. on either side lane could be very bad. This is a feels bad, man. Sentry drop, but they're not gonna find this ward. Oh. And they do have vision of Ice 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 now. Walking forward. Ninja Boogie. Yeah. Mushi there as well. And Mushi will retreat to farm the wave. Already this dual lane. At the very least, going to be bodied back. KYXY bottom lane. Taking a bit of harass from the Shadow Word. Yeah, going to be weak until level 2. Uh, I think they scouted Adam actually. I, I think they pinged out a bit. Uh, on face by side on the, in the trees here. So I think they know. However, Ice 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 is very far up. This could 
Blast does come out, connects onto Ninja Boogie. They get the slow off onto Isis Ice, but as you mentioned, there's the nerf coming into play that. Yeah. Less duration on the slow. Yeah. The, I think so, actually. That's yeah. pretty. Seeing stuff like that come into play is pretty mm -hmm. interesting. And just not long duration on that stun. Mushi gonna catch a blast and a timber chain. That's gonna force him more than likely to sell fairly soon here. Mid lane, Nyx Assassin versus the Lifestealer. Well, you we saw this matchup in a different lane earlier on today. Uh, both should be able to farm. No real major kill potential, barring rotations from other, either side. Yeah, I mean this lane, I have no clue. It's gonna be. I'm pretty sure both are gonna farm more or less yeah. uh, everything. I think there might be a slight advantage to one or the other, but more or less. Equal. Jabs. Perhaps being encroached upon by 343 here in the mid lane, but still only level 1. Not sure there's really any kill potential in the Nyx here. I think Adam is very uh, sad that he decided to go top. I think he could have actually netted a, a second kill on bottom lane, but wanted to go for the big price and shut down the team very early. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Probably regretting that right now. Roll in. Mid lane does not connect. Carapace was there anyways for Jabs to at least reflect the damage. But they won't be able to get a kill. Open wounds and rage going to be used as well by Raging Potato. So, going to be a bit low on mana going forward. Ice, ice, ice. Top lane. Gets hit by the LSA. Thunderclap is there. Glimpse as well. But already five stacks of the reactive army. Mushi, he's going to take a tower oh, hit here. He's in no. trouble. And Blast will finish him off. Arcana down one to one, and a big death in the top lane. We talked about yeah, shutting down the timber saw, but experience gonna go the way of that radiant off lane. Yeah, that was uh, that was not very good at all. They are really they have insane, insanely strong lanes on Kineski, but having these small deaths are gonna gonna make it so much harder. They're not getting the advantage they should be having. Mid lane, 17 to 3, 17 to 1, pretty much dead even. Nyx yeah, and Lifestealer respectively. Here. They probably haven't played this matchup, so they're like, I'm, I'm not even gonna do anything weird, I'm just gonna farm. That's usually how it goes when with, with these weird matchups. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, XY solo experience, bottom lane. Gonna yeah. catch a fatal bonds, but looking to eclipse that level 4 mark fairly soon. Has a decent amount of CS, you know, one wave under his belt. It's gonna be able to body back Black with the Caustic Finale. So very difficult to kind of zone him just with the solo warlock. Mid lane now. Major Potato forced back by XY. And Jabs is going to have his bottle delivered. He's going to pack, oh, so pack nice himself room. an arcane rune. Yeah, definitely for the Nyx Assassin. I have rotation coming in from Adam. But the uh, ward actually going to scout him. And oh. maybe even scouts him dropping a ward of his own. Pull for it. Is going to find the next Assassin Spike. Carapace is there, yes, though. They get the stun fire. and the blast. Second kill of the game for the Keeper of the Light for XY. Blast goes out. Is going to connect onto Raging Potato, but that'll be all she wrote for the mid lane. So, again, 3 4 3's attempts in this early game thwarted, and the Earth Spirit really starving for some kind yeah. of impact. He's trying to do too much, I think. I think he should have. He, he probably felt like bottom lane is. is, is uh, already good you know that's that's a good lane now for mm -hmm. sinking and then i want to save my other lanes but it's it's backfiring and if you stay bottom they will probably destroy the safe lane and, uh, he still can have a lot of impact i think they are probably getting timber stick charges are there but the chain not in time to save ice 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 and they will get him with the level two of the earth spirit boulder smash just that extra bit of time and they get off the few right clicks there. So enough magic damage from this arsenal of heroes to be able to bring down Ice Ice Ice. But back to lane, he'll come and definitely uh, not displeased with his early game on the Timber Saw. Coddle as well has a couple of kills to his name. They've got a stack for him to farm up. He's already level four. So all in all, Faceless still pretty happy with how this early game's going. Yeah, this is like why call dual off lane is the strongest. Not only because of the pressure in lane, which is a lot, but it's this kind of stacking. You can stack both camps pretty easy as call. You just attack and send the blast, and you get both, and then you clear it very easily. With most of laners can clear this as well together with call, so it's it's very nice. You, you're getting a lot of in lane, and then as well the jungle, and you're kind of snowballing heavily from it. Yeah, Ice 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 picks up his level five, and as Kato will do the same. So overall, you look across the board. 
Oh, life steal with a haste. He has a TP on Warlock. Yeah. That's just gonna be to make it out. Doesn't cost the life to go all that much since, as you mentioned, he does have the haste. And we're now gonna run back through mid lane. XY doesn't have the mana leak though. Blast gonna come out from the trees. Raging Potato able to dodge that relatively easily. And back to lane and farming he'll go. Meanwhile, black bottom lane 39 CS doing very well considering he's got a Sand King opposite him in this bottom lane. Yeah, I I feel like, I'm not sure why Adam does, didn't want to go bottom at all. I feel like the if he gets another kill in, in mid or top, it's fine. But the impact killing Timber once is decent, but he could have had a lot more impact on bottom lane. Uh, they might have some kind of a plan though, like it, it might turn out to be decent. That's oh, a good nicely play, play. Yeah. yeah. He's gonna get the Spike Carapace under the Vendetta on top of the Caustic Finale. Reflects some damage, ensures he gets the stun and the Impale hit, or the Vendetta hit off, excuse me. And an easy kill and a, a big one at that. The Sand King, you know, at the time, hearing his level 6 mark, 378 experience going the way of that Triumvirate of Heroes mid lane. Raging Potato a bit low, Jabs will just return, and in the meantime, XY, he was able to find himself some experience in that mid lane. Yeah, I love seeing those uh, pre spike carapace and into stun. It, it lets look so cool, you know? Like, people with Battle Fury or like AoE spells, it's, it's very nice. Cancelling uh, Timber Chain with a uh, carapace is one of the best feelings. So, it's quite nice seeing those plays, even on. Somewhat unconventional stuff like Caustic Fanat. He seems to have gonna say that this is a Nyx mid. It's not the common, most common, you know. So he has might mm -hmm. be inexperienced, but he he knows it. He knows how to handle the hero. Right, they're aware he's under Vendetta as he just took oh, the rune. Meanwhile, the top lane, Ninja Boogie, very low as well. Ice 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 jumping through. Chakram is gonna finish off oh, Disruptor. He may kill more. everyone here. Chain is gonna whiff though. Does not have the Whirling Death. So we'll be able to stay up in lane and press forward, but not able to find any further kills. Meanwhile, Nyx Assassin did rotate down to the bottom lane, but looks like he didn't find an opening just yet on KYXY. does have a regen rune bottled, so... Mid lane now as well, nuts. Nearby, at least just soaking some experience. They desperately need uh, this rock uh, to be able to accelerate through that mid game and uh, fight up against potentially what's going to be an infest bomb from not only the earth spirit but at some point the sinking i wonder how much is going to transition into mid game now from a safe and lena seems uh, might be might be hard to kind of mm -hmm. transition out of that so we're gonna see how he does that currently he's trying to kill someone but that's gonna be hard there's no one around Call is kind of close to the shrine. I think this could be backup if they go on him. Roll is not going to catch the Coddle. Uh, they will end up cleaning up the camp, but. Really sure if it's worth the time to leave Ice 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 alone in lane. He does get caught yeah. by the kinetic field, but I mean, this Timber Saw is level 7, 4 levels in the reactive armor. He's not really at oh, all. Oh, God. Here to this Radiant squad. Well, make himself out. That was out. painful. For, uh, that, that's a that's a five hero rotation more or less. Mm. Even Lightsteel was getting there. And I'm not sure how much Earthspirit Adam has played because he played position five uh, recently with uh, Team Bears. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if he has some, uh, if he's like used to playing this like re recently. So I don't think it's pretty bad, but you know like. I think maybe a more experienced Earthbeard would have ma managed to make a mid-roll kick and stop that. I think it was probably not gonna happen, but I'm a bit unsure if maybe it could have happened. Mid lane potato, level 9. Kind of the silver lining thus far for the Dire lineup in the early game. You know, he's right on par with the, the safe lane free farming Slark. Uh, does get the infest off mid lane. Jab's not gonna take any damage from it, but potato, he's feeling still very healthy. To continue to just lane away and you know for that reason has found a lot of farm in this early game black oh, in the midas. trees bottom lane ng bucky looking for him yeah black has gone for the midas here oh relying oh, on the rest of his team to create a little bit of space for him and iron Taran midas that's like uh, that's pretty greedy 
But I wonder if Midas is better on Slark nowadays. It's a bit hard to like realize the new Midas. Maybe it's like it's not that different, you know. Mm. Like, I, or if, is it better? I, I'm not sure. It's very hard to say. Like, it, it kind of should be better on, on more carries now mm. because you, you want gold. Yeah, that looked like a very desperate attempt to kill a Slark. It looked like that was. Probably not gonna happen. Actually, he has static storm, so there, yeah. there was some potential. And yeah, Ninja Boogie, as soon as he picks up six, buys a smoke and goes bottom lane. But Black playing safely underneath his tower. I mean, it is 11 minutes in. You expect your safe lane tower to be pressured uh, by that point, and oh, not worth funneling in one by one. Although Ice Ice Ice. Oh, two the one on the Nyx Assassin, one on the Slark, and certainly Nyx. Uh, Perhaps a bit more common. Allows him to transition at least into items if he doesn't uh, get kills. Uh, he's not a hero oh, that can really farm. There's smoke there. They're looking to fight this. Fatal Bonds goes out first. They don't have a glyph yet. They are just going to drop it down. They will connect onto Raging Potato. He still has the rage though. Uh, Luminate going to fly through. Static Storm though counters it. Uh, Epicenter from KYXY will find the first kill. That's going to be onto Jabs. The second kill. Or Maneski side is going to be found on to nuts as Raging Potato. No, and they find the LSA. Burrow Strike is there. Raging Potato double kill on the Lifesteal and the Tower. And as I just spoke about funneling in kind of 1v1, they try to use the Chaotic Offering. But as you mentioned, you know, if that Chaotic Offering is not used to counter initiate or stop the Lifestealer with the Rage, Raging Potato just kind of soaks it up and then looks to go aggressive still with the Rage in hand. So. Very they nicely not, placed. Yeah, they were not very coordinated there because I'm pretty sure they could have bursted uh, Life Stealer and I think it was Sanking was up there as well. Mm. But with uh, Nyx uh, stun into, off the golem, actually, Ice 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 is probably gonna go down. Oh, he, is he tanky? He has a hood. I think it's fine. Yeah, he could turn. It's fantastic, guys. Like. And gets the stick charges off. Black's coming through as well. The pull back from the Shockroom. Pounce is gonna connect on the KYXY. They kill him off. And Ice 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 showing very good understanding uh, of his limits on the hero. Didn't get the mid-roll kick there from 3-4-3. Three, three. <laughs> it's almost as if he heard you, but unable to kill off Ice Ice Ice's Timber Saw there. And at this point in the game, he's just he's just gotten way too many levels out of his lane. Sitting on level 9. Now they're going to pressure the tier 1 of Maneski just as theirs was brought down. And Ice 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 is going to stand tall. In front of Raging Potato. Does have the armlet, uh, but a lot of heroes nearby. Risky. Yeah. Gonna rage up. And oh, he yeah, will okay. TP up. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. More than uh, I knew, at least. I was getting worried, actually. Oh, what is he doing? <laughs> they could turn, but he knew. I said, so this will clean up the wave. I'll take Golem, that. one minute cooldown. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they should be defending this tower since it's on cooldown, but they're gonna drop it. Uh, they're kind of rotating it now, but. They could get black, he actually has TP in backpack, so it's gonna take him some time. Nice silence, and they get the Static Storm Good off days. as well. Very nice. 3-4-3. No three. risks taken, yeah. they, just, they use a lot, they, and they, they, that was coordinated as well. Mm -hmm. like, they knew what they were doing, everyone was on the same page. Mid lane and now. Get, uh, going on Raging Potato, but still, just too tanky. With the armlet Rage, he'll just pop it and walk away. And they will get the tier 1 tower in the in the meantime top lane, but losing black, a little bit of collateral damage for them. Mushi does pick up his Yule Scepter now, so as you mentioned, a bit of a slower pace out of the safe lane perhaps than it would have been out of the mid lane, but has his essentials here and now infested up is 343's Earth Spirit. Uh, Raging yeah, Kettle left the other inside. Hey, I'm, I'm not sure if this should be defended. I'm pretty sure they should be splitting. They, if they can burst Ice 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 Ice, ice. Oh, no, not I mean, I, I get confused by these nicknames for some reason. <laughs> yeah, Nuts has so, Ice Ice Ice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has the tag off. I, 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 I just read it and I'm like, wait, Ice Ice is being timber. <laughs> There's no way. Oh, yeah. But uh, you can't, you, I don't think you can take a fight against Space Test if, unless you go on uh, Warlock. Mm -hmm. So getting uh, the Sankin Blink is big. Uh, Earthspray rolling into a Warlock seems very unlikely. Unless he get, they have very good vision and he comes from some sick angle. That's probably not happening. So should definitely wait for the Sankey Blink. And they kind of waste time trying to defend Oh, bot lane. Dragon Slave into the Carapace. 
Once again, jabs under the cover of Vendetta, able to use Akiris. Meanwhile, mid lane, Isis is trying to TPL. He won't be successful in doing so. Magnetize and the Static Storm able to bring him down. So, core for core across the map. Uh, relatively even trade gold wise. Yeah, I wonder who will get most pressure on tower. Actually, this is some good rotation by Mineskin. They're gonna catch this call. 3 4 3 connects with the boulder though. smash. Rolling Boulder is there as well. And meanwhile, they lose their offlane tier tower, uh, tier one tower, that is. And it looks like, it, yeah, it looks like Faceless will be able to contest at the oh, very this. least this tier one. Impale goes out, phase boots off to the west, and Raging Potato will be able to retreat. Uh, they got a decent amount of damage. I think Minesco are relatively happy about that. Mm -hmm. They they got a ta tower. Uh, they, they they lost a tower, but they got two kills and they almost took a tower. So it's it's pretty good for them still. Even though it looked like maybe they didn't get that good of a trade. And it's a is back to farming though. Kinda wants to get his bloodstone. He's mm -hmm. he's relatively weak right now. There's a lot of damage on SK there's a lot of magic damage. Yeah. But and... they kinda have to focus everything on him. So he did stop off for the hood earlier and now black has picked up his shadow blade so can team up alongside jabs and look to create some space there for ice 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 and the remainder of their lineup is speaking of which rolling folder oh, forward is, is gonna catch on nuts and Whoa. blinding light they're in time but the rage able to purge it off they get the lsa on the north side as well to find xy and trying to save his nuts warlock, he will end up dropping double kill for Raging Potato, who's six zero and zero on this life stealer out of the mid lane thus far this game, and does end up picking up the last hit on the tower as well. So mid lane safe lane towers down for the radiant side. Dire mid lane tower very low as well. So teams trading relatively evenly in towers, but Blink Dagger up on KYXY now this is going to be you know a point a window in the game where Mineski is going to get very strong with where their life stealer is at and having both the earth spirit and sand king to get him into the fights yeah so uh, warlock getting jumped first <laughs> this now that I think about it warlock call like they have like the same they want to stand in the same place you know they're standing in the back they're waiting and it one of them can't stand correctly and Adam what a good timing let's get the roll can. off Raging Potato, able to TP away, give ba uh, Black a few Essence just stacks, help him farm a little quicker, but not exactly what Faceless were looking for uh, with the reveal of Black's Shadow Blade. Oh, will Yabs get something? He's chasing. He got a blink, but he's, it's in backpack, so... <laughs> he switched now. Oh, he could get it. Underneath Tower Vision here. Oh, he's he so earlier. He... Yeah. he still get the Courier. No, he's not going for it. Yeah, and doesn't have any kind of global contribution either on the back end of his oh. potential initiation here. So. He has to be careful. He's gonna place a ward up here, it looks like. But uh, his escape has to be good. Oh! They even ping him out on the disruption. Yeah, uh, but... yeah, yeah uh, they, they saw him, I think, right? Because mm -hmm. they saw the pinging. But KYX I was not there, reacting at all. So I'm not sure what if they what really happened there. Could have potentially been looking at his mid lane as the the creeps pushed yeah. in, and he walks over and ends up denying the tower. Meanwhile, Black finding some time to farm is a top the net worth. So despite being six zero and zero on this life stealer, whereas Black won one and two with that Midas and 145 last hits, he's been able to find the farm he needs. LSA gonna miss top lane. Ice 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 though, he's a bit low on mana, so. Very hard for him to press forward. Kind of baiting in though. Static Storm does drop down on the Nyx. The Chaotic Offering from the backside. Trying to disjoint the initiation on the Ice Ice Ice. He's still in a lot of trouble though. And the Blinding Light will at least delay it out. Ice Ice Ice, he's still alive. Meanwhile, they get the Disruptor on the back lines with jabs. Rolling Boulder over to the right. XY, he's still fairly healthy. Magnetize running through the entire Radiant lineup though. And finally, the Caudal will go down. Pounce lands as soon as the Rage is over and back. Gets a double kill with the Dark Pack finishing off the Life Stealer. Now 343 turning to the east to run. Pounce is going to whiff. He does have a Rolling Boulder available. Will get the yeah, Bounty Room. Gets a, gets a kick away. And Rolling Boulder TP out. He will just be safe for now. Mushi able to make it away as well on the Lina. But a very drawn out team fight. And when all is said and done, 
faceless looking good black pretty much un untended like not even attended to in that fight uh, was able to just kind of go wild and grab himself a couple of kills yeah adam uh, again uh missed the stun could have definitely killed timber if he landed it but kind of missed it by a little i think he went for a double stun could have cost them uh, cost uh, faceless a lot more oh, that's a good link out but we have an invis could he have detection and it's and Laguna Blade for good measure as they didn't have much vision up the hill uh, for the dire side. So they do end up picking up jabs and he certainly wasn't, you know, he certainly was a noteworthy target to bring down. They do pick up 1300 experience for that triumvirate of heroes. But overall feels like Faceless very comfortable with where they're at uh, in this one. Uh, they have the Slark and the Nyx Assassin as well as the three tier ones down. So should be you know fairly easy for them to start to establish some map control. Yeah, Black is getting scary. He has yeah. a BKB soon. I think they should probably get this BKB and then get a gem. And oh, this game is yeah. going to be very hard for Mineski after that. They don't really have anything to deal with uh, the BKB. Mm -hmm. They can burst him if they manage to st initiate on him. but. Initiating an Aslark is always going to be very hard, so yeah. this game is going to be a lot harder for Mineski very soon. You also have kind of the Blinding Light, the Chaotic Offering, you know, the Nyx Assassin behind the Slark, so they will have to find him in some ways out of position to be able to initiate uh, and then therefore finish him off thereafter. But mid lane, taking and finishing heroes off, 3-4-3 with ease is going to be spilled in the mid lane and black. You know, after starting 1-1-2, one, one, and two, is going to be 4 1 and 2 at this point. So, since he picks up that Shadow Blade, uh, three consecutive oh, kills. That's why he's calling someone in. And they're set up to gank. This could be backfiring. Yeah. Jump forward. They get an easy kill on the next. They know KYXY is nearby, but he should be able. Oh, the Yule oh, Scepter! Gee. With a not even half second left to go. Oh, Finds the card. It looked like it was the cost range plan I got him. I was actually going to mm. mention that, but he doesn't even have it. Yeah, top lane, Ice Ice Ice. Unattended does have the Bloodstone now. Um, not going to be the quickest at, at pushing this tower, but... Nice couple of kills for Mineski. Not going to translate really into anything. No objectives nearby, but now Black. He finds out Nin Ninja Boogie will bait out the Static Storm as well in towards the top lane. He doesn't even end up using his BKB. So really yeah, nice kill think, for Black uh, to get. I was, uh, I felt like he might have been panicked on DKB, but pretty calm. But, uh, good kill. Uh, doesn't result in much though. It's just getting mm -hmm. a, a disruptor. You don't really yeah. gain much from it. You're, the other parts of the map is being farmed by the opponents either way. So you're just getting a kill. Boost your goal a bit. But not really contributing anything to the end game. So is that gem? Is there going to come a gem? I want to see on the... Supports are not interested right now. They might be waiting yeah. for the Codlags, Codlags, which yeah. seems pretty good. Yeah, but after Decent that, I timing. really think they should be getting it. Yeah. Gen they General. have two Invis heroes and Codl, which is Codl and Spark, like the two best uh, gem carriers, so mm -hmm. should be getting one. Plate mail picked up by Ice Ice Ice. He's going to get inevitably harder and harder to kill as this game goes on. For Maneski's side, they do have a lot of burst available with the DSK Lena. Uh, and even the Lifestealer to an extent, but Ice Ice Ice, he's almost been ignored for the f last five minutes or so up in that top lane. So level 17 currently alongside his Slark, who's 18 at the top of the board and doing very well for himself. Black has a double damage room, looking to pressure. They do have some deep vision down for the Radiant side, but no one showing themselves just yet. Yeah, top top lane. Lane. Ice Ice Ice, I don't think he's going down here. Not even close. Yeah, he just pops the barrier. <laughs> He's going to jump forward. Misses the Whirling Death, but it doesn't feel like he would have killed off. Uh, three three I anyways. So. Might have been yeah. close. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of... It's very hard to gank a team so. He's so tanky. Oh, mm -hmm. they're finding something. They, do they have a gem? No, they just have detection. Sentry down. Jab's in a lot of trouble. Gets the impale off onto the Disruptor, but Raging Potato finishes him off. Ice, ice, ice. He's now going to turn tail and run. Jump forward, oh. though, from KYXY. He's got the Yules up. Gets the burrow strike the off. And they do use the static storm. He, he will get it off in time. Wow, KYXY even expending the epicenter, hoping to get the kill, but he gets the deny in time. Now blinding light gonna keep them from pushing back the tower. 
Black in position, ready to initiate. Yeah, Jumps in on, onto Raging Potato, and we'll just back him out. Not going to commit the pounce there. Yeah, that's good. If he had Basher, he could have maybe went for it, but doesn't have it, so... Uh, good place from both teams, I, I kind of guess. It was uh, very unlucky for Ice as Ice, mm -hmm. uh, or in terms of KYX. I, I think popping Epi was a pretty good decision. Uh, However, it didn't work out, so pretty good by SSI to get that bust on the night off, but Mineski is taking control over this game. It's feel like it's up to Black to do something. It's basically him that has all the farm. Yeah, it feels like despite how much space Ice 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 has got, his impact has certainly not been reflective of that. And so Black, you know, with all his farm. They do have the Cotalags now, though, so yeah, look for that gem certainly to come out fairly soon. Yule's bot lane, Ice 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 going in deep for Mushi. Ushi again going for a similar build earlier uh, that he did earlier in the Yule's Lincolns. So certainly favoring the kind of defensively natured build. Yeah, he went I to see. respawn time. I'm not sure what we saw earlier. I say so. He's going to get silenced up by the geomagnetic grip. Magnetic goes out, or uh, magnetize goes out, and they will end up bringing him down underneath the static storm. There was no response at all, really, yeah. from Faceless. Nuts. He's going to be a secondary kill. On the back end, and Mineski continuing with their momentum from earlier in the day. They really just haven't made use made use of this Coddle Eggs yet. They don't have the gem to pair up with it. Haven't smoked under daytime in black. With the BKB, he's still yet to use it. Feels like he got this, you know, seven or eight minutes ago. Still sitting on that 10 second charge. There's definitely some miscommunication, miscommunication going on. They're not... We remember the, early, the first golem usage, they were like, he hesitated on the golem and then he put it down, but then Nyx wasn't ready for it. And mm. this was like a very similar thing. Ice is Ice is just yoloing in, the backup is not there, Black is, has already oh, took it out. They're not, they're not there with call to recall, oh, so they're like, they're not on the same page. They're kind of just playing solo Dota. And Mineski oh, seems to be much better than allowing a team to just solo Dota on their way to a victory. Mushi's recovered nicely um, out of the safe lane. He's got his Shadow Blade now in addition to Yule's Lincolns. So I can look to set up on his own. Maybe even gets himself a gem would be very nice against the Nyx and Slark can initiate. At least on the Nyx with the Infest. Okay, well, XY TPing down to the Shrine. Has a double damage, inconsequential, but more so has the Lifestealer inside him. And they're looking at Ice Ice Ice, who once again is alone yeah, out in this bot lane. They get the epicenter off Static Storm again. And down to three charges Bushy. from 12 quickly. Well, oh, mid lane. Shadow Blade ain't out. Oh, he was, he was uh, surrounded by three heroes. And they put down like three sentries to get him, but he just ran past all of them. Fiery Soul level 4, Shadow Blade available. Lincoln <laughs> Sphere and Yules. And yeah, definitely a very fast. Excuse me, hero. They'll be able to transition that timber kill and Lena's survival into a tier two. Mineski looking very good at this point. They've yet to deal with black, but it just feels like across the board, um, Mineski have heroes that have been having considerable impact in this game where Faceless just can't say the same. Their Warlock Golem has yet to be used to great success. Uh, and it just feels like, you know, the early blink on Nyx, they haven't found all that much. So oh, a lot of this, as you touched upon before, Faceless. on black. Time for them to shine. They got the jam. They're going aggressive. Nyabugi is getting out, so this could backfire. I think they, they seem to have a kind of a clue where they are, approximately at this. It's like that. Um, we'll get him jump bait. forward though. KYXY. Rock is going to be onto the Rage of the Lifestealer. They get the Spike Carapace off onto Jabs. And now the Lifestealer, he's in trouble. He's going to end up dropping Mushi. Combos up two supports, though, and gets a double kill in the meantime. Will Black be able to find him one second until Pounce? Mushi very fast with the Fiery Soul. And it looks like, oh, he gets bashed Bash. up. Stops for that split second to try and get the extra Fiery Soul charge. And it costs him. As Black able to chase him down with the freshly picked up Basher. And they did have the gem available. Uh, the fight went overall very well for Faceless. Um, Mushi just able to kind of salvage it with that double support combo in the back. Yeah, they didn't manage. They they, they kind of had to go up. 
nuts every time. That that's more or less the only way to win team fights, unless you're like very far ahead. Because but Slark is very strong. Black is he he will destroy anyone if he's if he has this team backup. So you kind of have to stop the the nuts counter initiation or sanking. There's a gem incoming. He yields himself up, but it feels like he's in a lot of trouble, and yeah. we'll just end up dropping. And Alik was there anyways, doesn't feel like he had enough for a bro, so... Good rotation over from Black using that gem. XY serving as bait, and... You know, Black extremely far at this point. 2200 oh, gold in addition to the Basher again. Got the blood on the night, probably gonna use it. Does end up... Actually getting used offensively, but yeah. Sees Got Mushi and one. Raging Potato come in and... He will end up doing ice, ice, ice things, Whoa. making space for Roche. This is some good place. If they... Oh, this is slow. This is not that fast. Slark is not a good Roche taker. Mm -hmm. There's no one that's a good Roche taker in the baseless team. Yeah, they're backing off. I think that will... that's probably the better decision. Black mid lane looking to see if he can find a straggler. Mushi gonna reveal himself here. Finds the disruptor instead and will be able to pick him up with that dark pack. Does get silenced up. But has the BKB if he wants to purge this. He's going to hold on to it for now, though. And they'll kill off Mushi. So a bit of a case of perhaps chain feed from Mineski. But well, Mushi didn't really have any choice but to fight. He had used his Shadow Blade to walk in towards that mid lane. Yeah. And now uh, the, the Roche is going to be ripe for the taking for Faceless. Yeah, gonna just need to get some advantage. You're not that strong in Roche. But if people are dead, there's doesn't, nothing to really stop you. This game is getting very hard for Mineski. You see mm -hmm. these fights, like you don't have a way, you, you cannot deal with Slark at all, but you're not managing to kill everyone else, which is like the only way you, the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very hard for uh, Mineski, and I'm not sure what their game plan is. They're playing against double Midas, so they are falling behind rapidly. I cannot check the uh, graphs, unfortunately, so I don't yeah. know how much. There was a but, time uh, about four or so minutes ago. Uh, that Mineski did have about a 2,000 net worth lead, but it's now 4k in the favor of Faceless. Yeah. Faceless are getting this game back very fast. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like a smoke play. I think there's a gem. Yeah, Earth Spirit got a gem now, so this is uh, a big fight. If they manage to win this fight and get a gem from Black, this could be the turning point. And Mushi holding onto the gem here in the front. Uh, as he does have the silver. They edge. know though. They have good positioning. Black is going in. Black gets silenced up, but has the dark pack preempted. Now, on the north oh, side, the good. static storm is pretty much gonna whiff. They do get the warlock, but they need to run down to the south to re-engage on the fight. And now Black, he's just gonna look and man fight. Epicenter up to the north. Ice, ice, ice. Still standing tall. And the two carries fighting against one another. Mushi gonna join up. Black in trouble. Does have the Aegis though. Jabs nearby. Mushi, Laguna blades him down. Meanwhile, Ice 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 will be able to pick up 3 4 3. And now Black gonna respawn. Jabs gonna come in. Mana burns up the Lina. They'll pounce forward and find her. Black has six essence just charges. It's Looking to find ultimate. Raging Potato. And KYXY, he was thinking about re engaging, but he'll think twice as Ice 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 joins the fray as well. A little whiff on the timber chain, but double kill for Black as he gets the timely bash once again. And a very split up fight, but it just seems like Aegis was just the tipping factor there as they spend a lot of time trying to bring down Black, and it was really only his first death. Yeah, the Aegis winning that fight. Good focus. Uh, now they kill Nuts, first thing else. Like that, they have to do that. There's no mm -hmm. other option, more or less. So that's very, very good from them. But they lost the gem now, so now Facelift has two gems. So, mm. unless I, I didn't see uh, Facelift pick up both, but I am assuming they have it. Um, yeah, Jabs and Ice 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 both have one. Yeah, so it's very hard for Neski now. And they're gonna go hang on. Yes, quite a lot of stacks, not an insane amount, but a lot to take. Down. No, uh, they, they didn't just had Static Storm come back up and. I mean, Black does not have Aegis, but he's got a full butterfly at this point with no life stealer. Yeah. Jump forward, Dust. Try and find Black. They will get the glimpse back onto him. He gets the Dark packed off beforehand. Will be able to BKB and ult. He's going to turn and right click into KYXY. Godlike streak for the Slark. Zip forward from Ice Ice Ice. Ninja Boogie in trouble. Illuminate finishes him off. Jab's able to blink out after open wounds. Ice Ice Ice, not the easiest target to bring down. He's going to be silenced for the next little bit. And there's the counter initiation from the Chaotic Offering onto the Lifestealer. They'll turn back onto Mushi though and bring down the Lina. 
Even with Magnus Eyes taking away, they'll be healed up by the Illuminate. Black will jump forward in towards top lane. He's got Shadow Dance once again. 31 Essence Shift stacks and the Butterfly. He wants to be able to use this on the buildings. He's going to be healed up by the Urn as well as the Shadow Word. Raging Potato. Forced to pop Rage here. And Ice Ice Ice, he doesn't commit all that much to it. Gets an Infest off into a Radiant Creep. Won't be able to make it away, but it's two melee racks. Is one full lane in the mid lane. Here, 36 minutes in for Faceless, and they really lose nothing for it when all is said and done. Ah, uh, this game uh, had a fast turn. It ended, but it seems like this game is more or less in Faceless' hands now, and very hard to for Mineski to win. Like I said, the fight before, like uh, in the in Mineski's jungle, like this could be the turning point for Mineski, but it ended up being more or less faceless straight up winning the game with I'm not, not sure if there was many buybacks used or if any uh, I don't know the buttons I need to take a second no no buybacks used but you you need to take and fight in the opponent's jungle now to take control over this game for yeah. Mineski you can't really fight in your base anymore yeah and, and they're Ali they have Alina but they're not good at dealing with super creeps uh, overall yeah. as a lineup so they need to itemize for it but mm -hmm. then they're not itemizing to win fights, which mm. is not good either, so it's very hard for them right now. Abyssal Blade as well now picked up by Black. You know, for all intents and purposes, he's two full items ahead of his next closest enemy competitor. Yeah, I wonder what the that plan is. Seems like they're strong enough. They, they, they seem to be maybe waiting for Kato coffering, but I don't feel like the... I feel like Black is probably just saying, we should go now, we shouldn't wait, I'm mm -hmm. so strong. So they're probably gonna listen to that and go a bit more aggressive and at least take this tower, even if they don't have Golden. Word pinged out as well, Black gonna deal with the Shrine as Ice 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 and the rest of the squad push in the bottom lane, the last tier 2 Stopping them from taking that third lane of Rax and Black. Oh, Epic. And they do have Ward Vision. Oh, ice, Ice, Ice. He's going to kind of get glimpsed out of the epicenter, though. KYXY pops the BKB. The Life Stealer still inside him. Now will finally pop, knowing that the Rock is down. But Black, he'll just get to work and bring down KYXY. Pounce not going to connect onto Raging Potato. He does get the Infest off, but a jump forward from Ice, Ice, Ice. Gets the Shock Room slow off. And Raging Potato, he will be able to arm the toggle and make it out. Chaotic Offering just coming back. Off cooldown was used on the north side of the fight. They'll bring down 343. Three. Nuts in trouble. Will end up dropping Shiva's though. Doesn't quite give them vision of Mushu. Who's able to make it off to the west. Ice, ice, ice. Oh, doesn't connect with the timber chain. Perhaps may have bursted the disruptor there. And all said and done though, the mo most important heroes of Faceless are still alive and ticking. And they'll take down yeah, this tier 2. Warlock got the carry coughing out and that probably man, that means that Minesk lost the fight. Uh, Mush is kind of yoling here, which is pretty good, because that's what you have to do to even have a chance at this game. And it works out. If his team can follow him up. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're able to KYX. Why? Just a minute too late. Now he's going to get abyssaled and save yeah, your teammate like syndrome. Black, 40 Ashen Shift stacks roughly at this point. Will force the infest out from Raging Potato. Meanwhile, Ice 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 blows one up. In the front line. I think and I could even go for Chrome right now if you wanted to. Lena has a buyback available. 20 seconds till KYXY is up though, and feels like without a full five man, they don't really have a chance to defend this. And they will throw in the towel in this game one faceless. After looking like Black was really the only relevant hero in towards the mid lane, like Ice 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 ended up dying a lot of times by his lonesome. It just felt like. Mineski just unable to deal with it, as you mentioned, without bur bursting the Warlock before counter initiation comes out. Uh, they were just unable to win fights, and it felt like that fight at the staircase near the Dire Secret Shop there uh, really uh, propelled Faceless uh, into yeah. the, the, the mid lane push in the game thereafter. I feel like they they didn't kill Warlock one fight, and they lost the game because of that almost. So they they, they didn't have as good warding as Faceless had in the area, and if you're taking a fight. A lot of the times the one with the better warding is gonna win it and unfortunately they couldn't get one war down and they think black was just so farmed that you couldn't actually afford to lose a fight that was probably one of the biggest problems
All right, guys, that's game one. MRP Kefka here beyond the summit two. Manila Masters SEA qualifiers. Faceless going to take a one to nil lead. And if they win the next game, are going to make it through to the land. Maneski trying to keep their hopes alive. We'll be back shortly with game two.